Uh, sorry, I'm Ronan Doherty, I'm the CEO of Electroroute. Uh, delighted to come here this afternoon and just spend five or ten minutes with you guys just to give, us, give you some of the views um, on the sector and the intelligent energy uh, system space from where we, we stand in a commercial company that's actually in the markets itself. So I'm probably out of research too long to present any sort of technical uh, content. Um, some of our own activities are probably too sensitive to, to dig into in depth, so some of my uh, comments are a bit more uh, on the surface and some observations for, from a commercial point of view. Um, so Electroroute, what are we about? Uh, Electroroute's a specialist energy trading company. We're rapidly expanding in the deregulating spaces of the international electricity markets. Our platform is kind of fast moving, innovative, flexible, and that gives us a distinct advantage over the large incumbents in the sectors and in the parts of the market that we choose to compete in. Um, so the context of why we were set up in this way, there's huge expectations on the electricity systems, as you know, to deliver a whole range of needs for society. There's carbon reduction, smart usage, electric vehicles, security supply, cross-border you know, uh, economies for, from trade, and so on and so on. We're, we're all very familiar with them. But in order, for all, in order for society to get better electricity systems, it needs better electricity markets. Things only tend to happen when people get paid and can monetize on their innovations. So getting the market piece right and liquid enough allows the technologies and innovations to actually come to fruition to the market. And that's, that's what we're here to do uh, in the electricity space and Electroroute. So well, we've, we've compiled a team uh, you know, of deep expertise in this space, and we structured that team uh, in a company to allow that flexibility and innovation to happen. Um, so as you're aware, this is a big and evolving space. We've characterized you know, how big it might actually be. So um, the electricity markets, there's a lot of turnover. There's a lot of energy being consumed by a lot of societies, but an increasing chunk of that energy that's being consumed is being consumed in a way through the markets, which is outside your standard vertically integrated utility model. Classic vertically integrated utility buys its fuel, builds its plant, owns its wires, and supplies its customers the vertically integrated game. An increasing portion of turnover in the markets is not being done that way because of new technologies, new agents, independent projects, new ideas, and different agents and, and, and smart usage practices come into the market. So that turnover we see from now to 2020, that, that non-traditional uh, slice, slice of the market is growing rapidly. Maybe 500 million in Ireland by 2020, it'll be certainly billions in the UK, and it'll be tens of billions across Europe, never mind the rest of the world. So, these type of activities are, you know, short-term uh, short trading, uh, explicit e export and trade of wind energy, financial power, transmission derivatives, uh, independent projects coming to market, wanting to do business their way, not necessarily in the way utilities work. Um, people need liquidity in the market to do what they need. Um, smart energy usage needs intermediaries and be, needs to be able to plug into those markets. It's, you know, it's, it's only smart if it's actually making or saving money. Um, and, uh, and different range of parties need agents. So that space is really is really growing, and that's the that's the the, pl the playing field that we in Elect Electroot uh, um, ha have targeted. Um, so Electroot is a company we set up two years ago. Um, there's a collection of faces in in the company uh, at the minute. We trade in the GB power market, uh, in the Irish power market. We trade over the interconnectors. Uh, we do some high-end commercial and trading advisory work for clients, and we off also offer managed services. Um, currently, right now, we're the biggest and most proactive trader in the day ahead and intraday markets um, between Ireland and the UK. We're also the biggest and most proactive exporter of power off the island of Ireland to the UK. You might have seen a lot of you know, news coverage about exporting power in, in so many years' time. Well, it's actually happening today as well, and uh, we're, we'd be the biggest and uh, most proactive uh, agents in that regard. Um, in the near term, we also aim to branch out into the continental uh, European uh, markets, into the CFD markets, the, the green certificate markets, and, uh, and so on. Um, so you're probably wondering, why am I in the intelligence systems uh, group? It's probably because me and Sean, Sean went to the same school in Donegal. Um, <laughs> no, what, uh, you know, intelligence systems is really, really important. That's, that's what this sector's about, um, and that's what we do here. Well, there's a lot of very, very smart systems here. You know, you have to be aware of where the electricity industry overall is as an industry. It's actually quite backwards in terms of systems. Anyone who comes from ICT or telecom sector 
into the electricity sector, they're like, Jesus, the systems are all a bit, you know, 1990s here. And, and to be honest, it's true. And for our sector, there's a big challenge in getting, getting up that curve and getting systems, information usage, data working better. Um, somebody said to me once, electricity company would be uh, lucky to have a, li a list of its own customers, but um, maybe that's going a bit too far. Um, so in terms of the interest with uh, the C's group here and, and the type of research that's going on, for us in Electroroute, you know, people are everything in a business like ours. You know, we've no concrete assets in the ground, there's no pattern for, you know, a, ma a magic formula. Um, the right people working passionately in the right business environment is, you know, the most important and we think the least easily replicated commercial advantage a company can have. So smart people is what we want. Smart people then go on and build uh, uh, smart systems. Um, so for us, you know, recruitment meticulously at, at all times is, uh, is really important and you're always trying to find where the talent's coming from and, uh, and wh wh where's the best pools to tap. So, you know, in a, in a revenue intense commercial or, or, or trading sector, the difference between an exceptional performer and somebody who's average can equate to quite a lot of value or quite a lot of money. So, you know, it's really a people, uh, it's really a people business. So, um, <clears throat> Mark asked me to give a few thoughts on, you know, the role of, the role of uh, research groups like this and how interaction with industry could go. So, you know, these views are, are, are purely my own, but interested, uh, interested to give them to you anyway. Um, you know, a research group like this is not going to change the energy space, but hopefully its role is that it's going to create the people who are then going to go on and change the energy space around the world. Like, in Ireland, we're quite good at this type of stuff, and we can be the absolute best in the world at this type of innovation in the energy space. So we should be proud of what we've done and be really ambitious about what we can do, because, you know, the rest of the world in a lot of ways is lagging a lot of the issues that we tackle in Ireland. So we should be assertive about getting ourselves skilled up and getting our people out there uh, into, into the sector. Um, as an employer of, uh, of, uh, of people, you know, what does a company look for? We're looking for well-rounded individuals, if they're masters or PhD level, you know, a deep working knowledge of, of the power systems and electricity markets is really important to us, top-rate analyt analytical skills, you know, highly adept at structuring and handling data, and, uh, you know, data and huge volumes of data, how it's structured, how it's stored, and how it's handled, you know, that is our sector. That's the language of, uh, of what we do in, um, in the kind of smart energy space. And it's a point I actually just want to drill into a little bit more. <clears throat> Over the last couple of years, as, a, as an employer, I've actually recruited quite a lot of people in various roles. I used to work in electricity, aquamarine power, and electroroute, and recruited possibly over 40 people um, at mostly usually at a postgraduate level, a master's or PhD, and within the first five working years uh, of their career. And over time, I built up, I suppose, a, you know, true experience. I've seen a trend, something that was disappointing to me, and some, something that I thought we should be doing better for our graduates. So any time I find myself in front of an audience that included academics, I started getting on my hobby horse on this, uh, on this particular topic, so let me get on it again. Um, there's quite a lot of engineers that are coming out of college, <clears throat> out of degree and master's programs, which are inadequately qualified, in, in my opinion. I think their engineering program directors have let them down. The modern world needs modern engineers, <clears throat> and there's a huge lack of programming skills, I feel, as an employer, in some of the programs. Not, you know, it's not Ireland or UCD, you know, I see this in the UK, in Northern Ireland, or right across the board. The modern engineer needs to be able to program, particularly in a space like this here. And you know, we're not talking about six weeks of Fortran in, in first year or pushing some text files in, in, into your MATLAB. You know, <clears throat> at degree level, you should be looking at have been really proficient in two programming language and knowing what a database is. If people are coming out of engineering masters, with, you know, they should be coming out with two languages, know maybe a scripting language, maybe know how to structure two different types of databases in a really industry, robust, industrial way, not, not a, co a cobbled together type of way. This is the bread and butter of how smart energy systems work. If you don't speak this language, it's very, very difficult to make headway in, in the space. And as a recruiter, I actually see too many people coming out of college, really bright, lots of things. Got any coding? No. It's much, much easier for me as a, an employer and a company to tell people about the energy system than it is for me to train people up to, be, to, to, to do some basic computer code. So <clears throat> every time I find myself in front of some academics, I'm, uh, I'm keen to give this feedback from, from the, the labor market. And uh, if, anyone, uh, if anyone doubts what I'm saying, you can look around the labor market in Ireland. 
there's no unemployed programmers, but there's an awful lot of unemployed junior and masters graduated in engineers. So um, I think there's a point there to, you know, that tells us how the how the engineering needs have changed. <coughs> Okay, so you know how companies would interact with the you know with research groups like this. From our point of view, what we want is really really good people just coming into the ecosystem in all sorts of direct in all sorts of directions. So you know, the primary role here is education. Get great people coming out the door. Um, it's important that your research is relevant, but it's never going to be specifically bang on the money for this company or that company. You know. You have to keep that uh, that that objective of, of education as the kind of primary driver. Um, keeping your research relevant is important. I'm constantly staying tapped into what policy changes, what are the trends, what's happening in the utility sector, what's European policy changing. You know, it's very important to keep that in uh, in your field of vision as you start planning your research and, and, and structuring your projects in the space that, that keeps things relevant. <clears throat> often, uh, often companies get a lot closer to research groups and. Uh, we start focusing on joint projects or, or joint efforts. Um, you know, sometimes that that can be difficult. A company, a company's needs are not always going to deliver a project that has enough academic uh, credibility for a PhD necessarily. And sometimes you can compromise both the company's project and someone's PhD if you if you try and if you try and force something together that's that's not quite the right match. So, for my instinct is you know to keep really good graduates coming out with good core uh, academic output. If, uh, if individual projects are done with companies, um, you know, smaller projects done with companies, then it might be an idea to do it on the company's terms from the company's perspective. Um, you know, I think there's a perspective for any graduate or, or, or anyone on a program to do it that way. Of course, that would only be a portion of, of their overall work and, and, and could, never be, could never be the whole of it. Um, the, also, the other thing that can work very well for companies from time to time is secondments. It's great to get a young, enthusiastic uh, engineering uh, graduate into a company with uh, new ideas and new energy. So sometimes com <coughs> companies can find things like that useful. Um, one of the last points um, in terms of interaction between companies and research groups that I found in, in, in various roles in my career is IP can often be a barrier to cooperation. So uh, research groups particularly universities, they usually have somebody in charge of getting IP uh, as kind of a, a goal in of itself. What I find in our particular space, just in energy systems and power systems, there's very little precedent for IP or patents that actually have value in of themselves in our space. It's not like pharmaceuticals or, or other technology sectors. Um, so often, uh, I'm sorry, that's with patents, with the, uh, with the kind of software IP know-how, it's often very difficult to define in any, any type of relationship. So partnerships between research groups and companies getting to that formal legal agreement can often be a big turnoff for a lot of companies that, you know, um, as you deal corporately in a company, you have to, uh, you know, there's a lot of stakeholders that you have to involve with the perception of having a compromised or contaminated IP base can be, can be difficult for a company to have and sometimes they're just not on for that much hassle. And to be honest, like my experience having done research in this space, then done some technology commercialization in the space and I moved on to you know, uh, the further commercial end of the space, I still haven't seen any kind of IP that you could secure that is hugely valuable um, in of itself. So for researchers thinking about um, partnering up with companies, you need to be really honest, you know, is there something worth haggling over in terms of IP? If there's not, I think you'll, you could probably strike a much uh, happier relationship in terms of just putting the IP to one side and companies are able to open up, show you what they're doing a lot more um, without, without any kind of IP worries. So, so that's uh, something on the interface of research and, and uh, commercial companies that I, that I find problematic in the past. Um, probably running out of time, I just wanted to give you that quick summary there. So. Certainly, the space is changing. Non-utility turnover at the wholesale markets, new agents, new practices, it's all rapidly, rapidly coming to the fore. We need innovation, people, and new companies to run out there and, uh, uh, and do what needs to be done. Um, as I said, the right people working in the right environment is key, and that's why you know, a company like us is interested in, in the type of research that goes on here. So we are highly supportive of the type of research that goes on here and, and the kind of type of graduates that it can produce. Um, and again, in terms of research groups looking for specific interactions with companies, the simpler that relationship between the two yeah, is usually the better and, and, and uh, both parties usually get a bit more mileage out of it. So um, thank you very much. Thank you.